obviously, you work closely with Kevin Durant. Yes, sir. And uh, the Warriors owner, Joe Lacob, said that his decision to leave the Warriors, quote, made no sense. Yeah. What do you think about that? That's exactly what he should say. Okay. Right? Like, why? <laughs> I mean, if I'm the owner of the Warriors, I think it made no sense. But that's why it was Kevin's decision. But I understand. And I like Joe Lacob, and I and I like that competitiveness about him. I think that's why the Warriors, that's one of the many reasons why they've been so successful is like from the top down, there's a real competitiveness to win. So mm -hmm. I get it. I, I like that. You know, that part of it, I don't mind. I don't see that as like a shot. I see that as like an owner that takes pride in his organization and is like, I had the best player in the world on my team. And I'm like, damn, I don't get why he left. I just built a new arena in the middle of Silicon Valley. We won two of three chips. Well, it was Kevin's decision. You know what I mean? But I get it. Yeah. And I took him over there with a hard hat and tried to sell him on it. He left anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. let me let me let me look at let me let me ask the question in reverse. Yeah. So he's a member of the Thunder. They lose to the Warriors. He goes and joins the Warriors after that. How did you guys as a team deal with the public criticism of that decision? Uh I mean, there wasn't really like a blueprint. I mean, I think that. The reality is that Kevin is uh, is more mentally tough than people really even understand and has way thicker skin than people understand. I think people think that by him going back and forth on social media, which is way more a reflection of the time we're in, that that represents like how sensitive he is, so to speak. Good point. To me, I'm just like, man, he sees a comment on himself, he engages in it, and to be honest, he doesn't run from it at all. He just said on uh, the show the other day with Matt Barnes, he still has his burner counts. I embrace all that. And I think it was tough at times just because as as my boy, I care about him. And I, it was getting it was getting vicious at times. But that comes with it. And quickly you just realize that's part of the entertainment in this league. And you know what? People loved him more. He kept getting voted into all-star games. His jersey sales was still at the top in the league. People still loved him everywhere he went on the road. And he still produced. So, you know, it just came with it. But when you make a decision that's best for you, Hence, best for you, there's people that aren't going to mm -hmm. be happy with it. And I think he knew that and owned it. I, it would suck if players had to make decisions for the fans and for ownership and for this. They should make decisions for themselves. That's it. Absolutely. Dude, you can't please everybody. And I remember when he decided to play with anybody. them. Yeah, when he decided, when he decided to play <laughs> with them, I was like, that makes perfect sense. Because not only were they winning, they were yeah. having so much fun doing it. And the culture was so good. And it was like, you know what? If I'm playing pickup, I want to play on the best team. Yeah. I want to stay on the court. It's just like, yeah. it made perfect sense to me. I don't know why you have to set these challenges up in front of yourself to accomplish something, but it does kind of feel like that's what he did by joining the Nets a little bit. You know what I mean? Saying like, let me just up the difficulty level a little bit and win a chip over here. Do you think that's fair to say? Uh, no, I think honestly, like he looked at it as another challenge. I mean, I think that's really, I think that like, I've realized this with a lot of great successful people is the more practical and simple you can think, the more successful you can be and not really let all that noise go out. I mean, in Defiant Ones, Jimmy Ivey referenced it as like blinders that he mm. puts on. Mm. I think Kevin thinks the same way. He's like, I really want my craft to be honed in the place that I feel like it's the best suited for my game and I'm gonna take it there. I'm gonna play with who I wanna play with and everybody can deal with it the way they gotta deal with it. And that includes people that, in his own camp that are like you should do this or you should do that like that's a strong mind in my opinion i feel the same way about lebron like it's the same way if you just advocate for yourself do what's best for you and your people like how can you knock that we embrace that in every other walk of life but in sports we want to knock people for doing that because the fans are upset and the amazing thing about these all-time great players and i saw this happen with the late great kobe bryant is he was very grateful everything he did with shaq in the three championships but he really relished winning those two without him. Mm -hmm. Same with LeBron when he went back to the Cavs. I feel the same way a lot for KD and the Nets. It was great to go to the Warriors and win finals MVP back to back, but do you feel like I feel that it will be that much sweeter that he could take a franchise that hasn't been to that level in a long time and lift them to a title? Yeah, I mean, look, I understand that thought process from a – from a fan's point of view or for a peer, right? Like, cause you are a peer in that way. For me, it's like, uh, I think that experience will be its own experience and we'll have to see at the time if we get there, what that journey is and, and the work that's put in. And then you'll feel a certain sense of kind of satisfaction from that. And you may be right, but I know from being 
firsthand in, in watching the Warriors day in and day out, it wasn't a cakewalk to the finals. Not yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And you still have to go through the season and practice every day. You got to work. You got to make the personalities mesh. Him and Steph had to learn how to play together. There was a lot of work in that. There's that, that wasn't like an insert here and win ship. It feels that way because they won it. But, you know what I'm saying? the cat, Even like, look at game three. And the first time they won versus the Cavs, that was about as high a level of basketball I've ever watched. The two of them going at it. The mm-hmm. KD's first shot over LeBron. So it's like like they, they handled their business and did what they were supposed to do. But we know in football, when the best team in the league plays, they win 18 games in a row, and then they run into my Giants, and they lose. Like, it's a <laughs> lot of work to, to do that day in and day out. So, so like it'll be about, different. You're talking about the walk-up three that KD hit yeah. over LeBron. At Cleveland, and I was there. Was there. In, there's, in that moment, in that moment, it kind of felt like we have a new best player on the planet. Like, after that shot went in. And I want to ask you, because it does kind of feel like you can make a case for Giannis. You can make a case for Kawhi. You can make a case for KD. You can make a case for Steph. You can make a case for LeBron. Does he consider that when he plays basketball? No. You know that, though. Because you know that from hearing him interviewed on that question before and just knowing him, no. But I don't necessarily think you can make a case for everybody you just said, by the way. But that being said, uh, I'm not not saying anyone in particular, but I'm just saying I think the case for Kevin was made over a long period of time and a long body of work. But no, no way is he walking on the court. I don't really, I mean, I don't know because I don't talk to other players about this or really Mm -hmm. Kevin. Um, You would know. I don't know. I don't know if if you go out there thinking that way. Like, For me, it's like king of the court. And so right now, Kawhi Leonard is the finals MVP. He has the crown. When Kevin Durant was back-to-back finals MVP, for me, he had the crown. These are all-time great players. Yeah. So it depends on the moment to me. For sure. But I think I just had this conversation over uh, Christmas with CeCe Sabathia. We were talking about there's certain players where, like, yes, you can reference it in terms of the crown, the chip, the current rankings, like in tennis or golf, like who's number one in the rankings currently. But then when you unfold all that and you're in your living room with your boys and you're talking, you're like, well, who are we really giving the ball to when we need a hoop? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. And like, Which is that's different. Right, right. And that's what I said earlier today. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.